Hi, I'm Bob, and welcome to Between the Sheets, where we look at Microsoft Excel and related technologies. I want to show you how I recently solved a problem where I had to calculate a total cost over several years for multiple instances of a service that had a low introductory rate, then a higher rate afterwards. You've seen these. You sign up for a service and the price will be low for the first 12 months, and after they've hooked you and you're using the service, the price increases for all subsequent months. In my case, I needed to calculate total charges for hosting multiple websites, but of course it could be for any service with this type of pricing. My solution was to use Excel's undocumented date diff function. This function will give you the amount of time elapsed between two dates, but there's a small catch. Because it's undocumented, Excel won't show you any pop-up help or pop-up syntax for it. You just have to know it's there and how to use it. The good news is it's available in any recent version of Excel in both Windows and Mac. So let's take a look, see how it works. Here's the scenario. This web hosting service gives you all these great features for only $5 a month. Wow, how can you resist this? Especially with pizza every Friday. But I'm not sure how you download it though. But if you look closely, you see that after the first year, once you have your site comfortably working and you don't want to mess with it much, the price gets jacked up to $30 a month. So it goes from $60 a year to $360 a year. What we'll do is figure out how much it'll cost to use this service for several websites that are installed on different dates, and what's the cost if those prices are somewhat different, if they change. Maybe we're comparing the price of a few hosting companies, and we want to see which has the lowest total cost. On this sheet, we've set up the intro monthly price and the subsequent monthly price. We have five websites, and each one begins billing on a different day. Our goal is to find out what the charges will be on a date several years and several months later. So before we do this, let's take a look at the syntax for the date diff function. This syntax is pretty straightforward. Say equals date diff, and then we have three arguments. What's the starting date? What's the ending date? And what format do you want to use? And the format can be day, month, or year, and the D, M, and Y have to be in quotation marks, otherwise it's going to give you an error. So here's an example. Let's say the starting date is July 4th, 2023, and the ending date is August 4th, 2024. So we say equals date diff. There's A1 as a starting date, cell A2 is the ending date. We want the number of days in this example, so we use a D, and it tells us there's 397 days between them. Okay, so let's go do it. What we're going to do is fill in the first row, then autofill down, so some of these values will have to be absolute references. So let's start there for the first year. So we're going to say equals 12, right, because we know there's going to be 12 months. So we're going to say 12 times that C4, right, that's $5 a month. Now, because we're going to autofill down, we want to make that an absolute reference, so you can press either the F4 key or on a lap it's on a full size keyboard or on a laptop key, you'll probably have to hold down the function key and press function F4. You can type those dollar signs in. So that's what that is. I'm just going to hit the tab key to go over to the next column. And of course, this is something we could do in our head, so we see that's correct at $60. So to find the additional months, this is where we use the date diff function. So I'm going to say equals date. And notice when I start typing in the word date, it suggests a few different functions. Date diff is not one of them. When I type out the whole word date diff, notice there's no help. I open up the parenthesis, there's no help. So it looks like we're going to do an error, like we're going to type in a function that doesn't exist. But that's what I mean when I say it's not documented. You just have to know it's there. So here is the installation date, it's the beginning date, comma, the ending date is that. I need to make that an absolute reference. So on a full-size keyboard, you could press the F4 key, or on a laptop keyboard, function F4 to put those dollar signs in, comma, and we want to find the total number of months. So in quotation marks, I'm going to put an M. Close that parenthesis. Now, this is going to tell us the total number of months, but we need to subtract out those original 12. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to encapsulate this whole thing inside parenthesis, and now I can subtract 12. So this tells us not total number of months, but the additional months after those first 12. Hit the tab key to enter and go to the next column. And now we can calculate the total charge. So I'm going to say equals. Now there is C10, right, which is the first year charge, plus, and now we need to find out what's the remaining charges. So we're going to say there's D10, that's the additional number of months, times the higher rate up there. Have to make that absolute. By the way, if you prefer typing those dollar signs in, that's okay also. Press enter. So we have the total charge. Now what I could do is select all three of these cells. All three of these cells share a common autofill dot. And now we can drag down and we see what those amounts are. By the way, one little glitch that might happen to you is when you're doing this total number of months, this might give you like a weird date. It might think it's a date. If that happens, what you could do is on Windows, press Control-1, or on the Mac, press Command-1 to get to the Format Cells dialog box, and then choose Number as the category, and just zero decimal places. So that will fix it. Now we could just go in there, use the Autosum tool. On my screen here, it's a little squished, so I have to go to Editing on yours. You probably have the Autosum tool already visible. And I could just click that. And that tells us what's the total charge for all five of these sites with the initial pricing and the subsequent higher pricing. There are other ways of calculating an elapsed number of months, like combining the year and month functions, for example, but those methods are complicated. The date diff function streamlines this process. So until next time, my name is Bob, and this has been Between the Sheets.